Hello there my friends, welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. Now as I promised, it's my favourite time of year, game season is in full flow, so over the next couple of months we're going to be doing a lot of game butchery, a lot of game cookery, utilising a fantastic natural wild larder here in the UK, so anything from pigeon, pheasant, partridge, hare, deer, and my favourite, what we're doing today, good old bunnykins. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to skin a rabbit. God knows why I'm stroking it like a Bond villain. And then we're going to make a traditional rabbit pie with a twist. So it'll be rabbit, cider, stock, leeks, mustard and cream. And we may even push the boat out and put a suet crust top on it with some herbs in. And this is a traditional English dish. The only way it could be more traditional is if I was to wear... A top hat. Right, let's set the block up. Let's get the jackets off these beauties. Well, my friends, the wild rabbit. What's not to like about the wild rabbit? Well, all my hunting and shooting friends out there will know I don't think there's anything more pleasurable than a late autumn's evening out lamping for these beautiful things. All I'm doing, while I'm talking, is just gently easing the skin away from the carcass these are young rabbits so they're coming it's coming away nice and easy and people go on about free range organic well these are the blueprint so so good for you and especially around here they're getting harder to find hence if you go into a butcher's and you find them you know expect to pay about a fiver for them Considering in the war in the 1940s you couldn't give these away nobody wanted to touch them They were fed up of them now People are cottoning on to how good this natural Wild source of meat is So this rabbit has been paunched or gutted and we're just gently removing its jacket as I'm trying to speak to you now I don't save the skins, so all those people out there saying do you tan your skins? No I don't. So it doesn't matter if you get a little tear in them. Now personally I love rabbit. Just got to get your hands in. To me it has a firm meaty flesh. Just go through the neck with a subtle gamey flavour. I suppose it can be likened to particularly flavoursome free range chicken and it really does taste like chicken used to taste. And I know a lot of people have put off, one, because of its cuteness and two, that dreaded word gamey, but this really is not gamey at all. And a, a little trick, you can make a little salt solution up by just putting some water in a bowl, adding some salt, and just dip your finger in and taste it. If it tastes salty like the sea, it's enough, and take away any gamey taste if there's much there anyway. So, you've just seen me there, take the jacket off that one. I should just go and get another one then and stop talking and show you how to do it. Bright eyes burning like fire Okay, rabbit part two. So as you can see then, this has been paunched or gutted and we are just easing our fingers between the fur and the flesh. As you can see, it comes away really easy. Now these rabbits would command a higher price as you hunting and shooting guys know several ways. Obviously with a shotgun, you're gonna get a lot of shot so preferably shot with a rifle or a headshot for a clean carcass but these are the creme de la creme as these were ferreted by my son Bailey who is studying gamekeeping and he got these for me the lads went ferreting one morning I can't think of anything better to do so just easing over the arm it is hard to do it on the table and then Along its back, 
then you can see how easy it pulls away. Like I said, I don't save the skins. Once you get it in between the leg, you can see there, just pull. And the same with the other side. You can use the weight of that fur then to lever it off the back legs. Then pretty much off with its head, dear boy. And there, we have a not so lucky rabbit's foot. Just tidying it up then, where they've hopped it, just split the skin, no big deal. And then just the tail, and be careful when you get to the tail. There are a couple of scent glands, make sure you get those out, which are there. And that's what will give you, if there is any, a gamey smell. But most of all, you cook that with those in and you will get a very pungent flavor. Right, next, because I'm making a pie, I want to break this rabbit down. So, we've got our little bunny. I'm just gonna go straight up through the sternum. And as you can see in there, where the ribs end, I am just going to take that off. Now, in all fairness, there is not a lot of meat on the shoulders. Be great in a stew or just as stock. But what I've done with these before is marinated them overnight in the buttermilk, then made a lovely southern fry, but I call it a Worcester fried mix seasoning. Coated them in and fried them, and they were a great finger food. But what we want to concentrate on, obviously, are the back legs and that wonderful saddle. So I'm just making a cut either side, pretty natural. One, two, click it out of place. And there you have your legs and then the money shot if you can see the natural backbone I'm going to go he says down one side and take off that lovely saddle fillet or the loin whatever you want to call it and at the same time pull it off that skin and then repeat with the other side and I shall repeat this with the other rabbit I've got. And then we will take the meat off those legs and then dice it into pie sized chunks. But any of these bits, these flaps, you know, get it in the stock pot or save it, build up a little pile, get yourself some bunny burgers going or some rabbit sausage. So what I'm gonna do, I want it about that big, is Dice it up, and the same with the legs. Simple as, like with a chicken drumstick. Just either side of the bone. Quite simple. Take your time and dice it. Like I said, no waste. No waste whatsoever. And this time of year, you make up a big pot of gain stock, you know, it's like gold. It will see you through the season, be adding it to all kinds of sauces, all kinds of dishes. Wonderful stuff. Just for a few hours work, you will have yourself stuff that is 10 times better than you can buy in any supermarket. So, just roughly taking that off the legs and there with our loin meat, we've got a decent handful, I will repeat with rabbit number two, then we'll head off into the kitchen and cook up a storm. Okay, you saw me prepare that rabbit. There it is, I've got about 500 grams of that diced leg and loin meat. Also, I've got some shredded suet, some plain flour for my pastry. It's a beautiful smell that. Fresh thyme to go in the pastry. I've got 500 mils of chicken stock, got some Coleman's mustard, you know the drill some fresh leeks, 
and this beautiful cider from Somerset. Owl hat, the old rascal with the fox. And what does a fox like to eat? Good old rabbit. It can't get more English than that. Anyway, I've got some salt, sea salt, some pepper and some oil. First thing we need to do then is get this seasoned and get it into the pan browning off. Right then, easy way to season any of your stewing meat. A lot of you may have seen this before. It couldn't be any easier. Just get yourself a little bag. Let's move that over there. You get a tablespoon or so of plain flour. It doesn't have to be spot on. It's only for seasoning. Crank in some pepper. And then also, this lovely barrel is full of molten sea salt. Get some sea salt in there. Give it a good seasoning up. Give it a mix. Might put a little bit more flour in there. Then just basically chuck in your meat. And give it a twist. If you can catch a little bit of air, it will make it easier. So I just hold the top, give it a spin. As you can see, it's got air in it. Plenty of room to move. Give it a shifty and you'll find that every piece in there is perfectly seasoned. Look at that. Right, let's get the heat on that pan. Okay then, couldn't be easier. A little spot of oil in a heated pan. And remember, I've told you this many times before, you must get a good caramelization on your meat, its flavor, and what will happen when you brown off your meat. All that lovely caramelization where the sugar, the natural sugars in the meat are caramelized, is water soluble, and it will all leach into the liquor, and that's where you get your flavor. So as per usual, in a clock fashion, I go round the pan, then you know which one you have put in first, and you can turn them, and you'll find that every single one is browning at the same time. Good old bunnykins. As you can see then, we've got a nice colour on those. I will repeat with the other half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into my casserole dish here. Now, I would normally make it in this, do this in that dish, but the reason I'm doing it in the pan is so you get a better view of what I'm doing. So just a bit more oil in, and then get that second lot browning off. And in the meantime, I'm going to prepare my leeks, which we're just going to split down the middle and slice thinly then we can start browning those off and once you've done this and the leeks pretty much you are done it's just a matter of making your pastry i am going to do a suet crust you could use puff pastry but it's typically english with those herbs in there you know this is rib sticking food winter autumnal food comfort food and you might as well go the whole hog right let's get those leeks chopped Simple prep of the leeks then, down the middle, and then just let's get the big guns out, easier, slice it finely, I'm going to see how much one leek is, maybe add a bit more, you can hear my rabbit sizzling away, burning like fire, excuse that pun, and there, is our leek ready to go in the pan when the rabbit is finished browning. There's my second batch then, got a great colour on that. So into my casserole, again, another little spot of oil. Like I said, this would normally all be done in this pan. I'm just gonna get my leeks in. I shall get some heat under the pan, then I shall turn them down and just gently that word again, swept them down. I absolutely love leeks. I absolutely love whales, to be honest. My leeks have wilted down, so I'm just gonna add a little tablespoon of flour. What will this do? It will thicken the sauce. It doesn't get better than this. They really know how to make this cider in the West Country, Somerset, stunning. So I want about 200 mils of this. And as my old 
hero used to say. Ah, if it's not good enough to drink, it's not good enough to cook with. So we get about, what, 200 mil in there. And we want to bring that to the boil. And we can scrape off any of those lovely bits of caramelised rabbit off the bottom. Turbocharged flavour. And then we will all transfer it to my casserole dish and add our stock. Okay, so that's coming to the boil so I can transfer that into there. I mean, Keith Floyd, my hero, when he used to say that, if it's not good enough to drink with, it's not good enough to cook with. I mean, he was a legend. You know, often imitated, never bettered. And he would have loved something like this. Right. So we'll just let that get to know each other and then we will add our chicken stock. As you can see, that's nice and thick. So all I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna put a few sprigs of this fresh thyme in. We can take them out after. And then our chicken stock, I've got 500 ml. I'm just gonna put enough in to cover the meat to start with. Might be all of this. Yeah. And then it's a case of Bringing that up to the boil, turning it down, and then simmer it 45 minutes to an hour. And then what we'll do is we'll take the meat and leeks out, reduce that sauce down, add some mustard, add some cream, get it in a pie dish, and get our suet crust pastry on the top, which is what we're going to do next. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. Right, let's do it. Just one tip though, do not season this until it's reduced, obviously if you start putting salt and pepper in and then reduce that sauce down, it'll intensify, it can be too salty. So what we'll do is we'll reduce the liquor first and then season it up. Right, here endeth the sermon. Okay, onto that suet crust pastry. This is typically English. This really needs a revival. This is the ultimate winter warming pastry. Like I said, you can use puff pastry, but this takes it to a whole new level. So what I've got there then is 500 grams of self-raising flour. Get some salt in there, just sift it in. And then the suet, you add half of what your quantity of flour was. That's just the salt in there, that can go in. So I'm going to add 250 grams of shredded suet. Fantastic stuff. Get that in. Then, obviously, I've got some salt in there, so I'm going to season it with a bit of pepper. A few twists of pepper. Then I'm going to add a couple of bits of thyme by shredding them off these. I know it takes a bit of time. <laughs> hey, see what I did there? Missed my vocation. But it'll make all the difference. And it'll be a fantastic herby pie crust. I think that'll do. You know why? Because I can't be bothered to do any more. Life is too short. So to make this pastry then, we just want to add a few spots of water. It will take quite a bit of water just bring it together and you want quite a stiff dough so put a bit in gauge it and when it starts to come together we get our hands in and mold it let's get a bit more in there so as you can see then that took minutes if that and that's what you're looking for you want it to be a good consistency i am going to wrap that in cling film and chill it in the fridge ready to go on top of our pie. So my rabbit has been stewing for an hour, well just over, as you can see looks fantastic. Nice and thick. I want to take it that little bit further, intensify the flavour and add our cream and our mustard, but you can see with the back of that spoon that rabbit falls apart. Mm. Oh yeah. So what we need to do is remove the rabbit and the leek from the pot Get it back on the hob, lid off, I heat, and reduce it. Oh yeah. And then we can add our cream and our mustard, roll out our pastry, 
slam it in the oven. As you can see then, I've separated the meat from the liquor. Deadly this is. So on the hob, that's beautiful as well. Full power, drive off all that water, intensify the flavour, and we'll add our cream and our mustard, like I said. In the meantime, that can go in there. What a beautiful looking thing. We just wait for that sauce to reduce. Oh man, it's hard not to eat that. I just wanted to show you us reducing this. Obviously you can see it's still quite liquefied, but obviously with that lid off, we want to reduce this to a real thick consistency. And that'll take that flavor over the hill, baby. So my sauce scent is thickened up. Just have a look at this. Intense, rich flavour. And I tell you what, I've already had my spoon in there. It is oh, divine. It is amazing. So into that then, I'm going to put blob of mustard. That is the official term, a blob. Let's try that now. Let's take it to another level, baby. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and then a little bit double cream, a bit extravagant, get a loaf of bread now, that's all you need, try that, oh, some pepper in there, I think it's salty enough, obviously judge it yourself, put a little bit of mustard in and build it up. But I love this stuff. And that should. Look how it coats the back of that spoon. So it's just a case of filling up your pie dish. Give it time to sink down. Just look at the colour of that. And we will roll the pastry out. Can't stop eating this. Get it on top. Get it in the oven before there's nothing left. I just wanted you guys to have a look at that before it goes in. How beautiful is that? Okay, I've just rolled out my suet pastry. Just going to cheat and score that round. I don't have to be too fussy. You know, this is rustic food. I cannot wait to try this. So, I've fitted the lid to my pie. Now you can spend your time crimping it if you want, doing all that fancy work, but you know, this is rustic fodder, proper fodder. I'm just going to get an egg wash on it, around the sides, it'll seal it, but I just know it's gonna be fine. So I have preheated my oven to gas mark six. Look up there for the conversion, and we'll put it in initially for 30 minutes, check on it if it's nice and golden brown and raised, we will take it out and give it a try. Okay, my favorite part, the big reveal. After 30, 35 minutes in the oven, you get that. Have a look at that and listen. I can't wait to get that on a plate. And I've got my gamekeeper mate here. He's gonna try it with me. It's gonna be epic. It's rock and roll butchery, you know it, look at that. Bunnykins dressed up for the ball. You're welcome. Okay then, done the rabbit pie. It's there. What a beautiful looking thing. And with me is my gamekeeper friend Coops, my game guru. He's a gamekeeper, a deer stalker, and a brilliant shot. He gets me all my game and he is gonna try this with me, ain't you mate? Yeah. Right, camera down on here and we'll get into it. How attractive, two mid riffs. Right, let's cut into this beauty. So, it was the rabbit, cider, cream, stock, and mustard. Look at that. I think they'll share one plate, mate. A loving spoon. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, mate, get in there. Yeah. Tell me what you think. Bit of the pastry, bit of the rabbit. And a leak. Oh, what do you reckon? Lovely. I'm going to take the rest of that home with me. Are you? Mm. We'll see. <laughs> well, 
Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Scott Reed Project, how to prepare and cook a rabbit, a stunning rabbit pie. And there's the proof, Coops. How good is it? Beautiful. He is a gutsy bleeder, bless him. So if you have liked what you've seen here today on the Scott Reed Project, please click subscribe down here somewhere. Also, share it on Facebook. Like it, share it. Also, find me on Twitter up there, at the Scott Reed Project. Till next time, I am going to go for a lie down in the dark room. That was epic. See you again sometime. Say goodbye, Coops. Goodbye, Coops. I knew he was going to do that. <laughs>